And to stay with us now, nepotism is the practice of showing favoritism towards one's family member or friend in economic or employment terms. One of the most common arguments against nepotism is that the emotional ties between people who are related may negatively affect their decision-making abilities and professional growth, as we can see playing out in Nigeria, especially with the fight against insecurity. Now, someone shared this picture um, today with me on the appointment of all IGPs since 1999 till date. And on the president, Muhammadu Buhari, it's very obvious which region he favors. Outside of this, almost all his appointments in other governments, parastatals, seem to almost often favor those from the northern region where he is from. Now, is this constitutional? You know, is this constitutional? And what threat does nepotism play or pose in any nation and how can we achieve appointments that is all inclusive now please let us hear what you have to say remember you can join this conversation tweet at us at we show africa one with the hashtag we show or you send us an sms or whatsapp to 081 8038 so tammy and jennifer i'm going to bring in our guests like in a minute but i just wanted to hear your initial thoughts when that picture when you saw that picture what came to your mind let me come to jennifer then i'll come to tammy Jennifer, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can yes, hear. Here. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, when I first, <laughs> when I first saw um, that picture, I think the first thing that came to my, first thing that came to my head was um, tribalism, mm. and I feel like at this age and time, that shouldn't be the case. We've been fighting these things way before I was born during our great 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 grandfather's time and even now that we are getting old and we're thinking of giving birth and bringing kids into this world something things like this are still happening where is the inclusivity where are other people i'm, I'm sure that there are other people that are also very qualified i don't know the reason behind this and i would really love to know i've drawn my conclusion but at the same time I still don't, I don't know, I want, I've drawn my conclusion, but at the same time, I still don't want to draw a conclusion. But I will let the guests do most of the talking because I have questions that I need to ask and things that I would love to learn today. All right, awesome. How about you, Tammy? Okay, let me just say, like mention something for the sake of people who didn't get to see the picture. I'm not sure if you will display here. So from 2015 to 2019, I see here that the IGP is um, IGP Brian is in a northerner. From 2019 to 2021, we have IGP Mohammed Adam in a northerner. From 2021, now the most recent, we have DIG Usman Baba in a northerner. So that is, um, that's been since the beginning of the administration of President Buhari. And what comes to my mind is why. And then other people who are capable to work on other regions. Oh. All right, so let me bring in our guest, Pro Professor Chris Mustafa Wakobia Jr. is a passionate believer in the possibility of a world free of war, in the evolution of a racism-free universe, and in the deepening of values needful for the enthronement of love, selflessness, and service among citizens of the world. He is a lawyer in politics, a prolific writer, a columnist, and a patriot recognized for his extraordinary oratory abilities and uncanny grabs of an analysis of contemporary political and social issues. Now, Professor Chris is always available to lend his voice to issues of national concerns. And we are honored to be hosting him for the very first time, even though he's my friend, on Ways tonight. And he's joining live from Abuja. Thank you so much, Prof, for joining us. What well, is pleasure of mine. Thank you so much. All right, so Prof, um, I mean, this conversation is something that we've had. We've, I mean, both of us, we've had this kind of conversation for years. It's not, it's not a today thing, right? And I'm wondering why yeah. it keeps happening. Because even during, I mean, I think it's only President Obasanjo that seemed to be balanced in terms of appointment when it comes to, you know, um, government appointment and all of that. He was able to get everybody included. But you see, when different government, but, you know, Different governments have their different styles of appointment, right? But this particular government, right, that has, I mean, has been in power since 2015, 
time and time again, we see that appointments in government seems to be lopsided, seems to be, you know, favoring a particular region. And why is this so? And is it even constitutional? Maybe we should take it from the point of our constitution before we now take it, maybe, okay, is it even morally right or is it a fair thing to do, given that we are a, a, a nation that has so much diverse culture that every, I mean, we have brilliant minds from all over Nigeria. So what, it, what what does this mean for us, you know, when we keep having this kind of things? Well, let me say clearly first that uh, when in 2014, 2015, we campaigned to get this presidency on board, we believed that uh, we were bringing uh, to leadership a father, a man who cares, a man who believes in probity and accountability, and a man who, of integrity. Um, sadly, as we talk, um, when we look at how cronyism, nepotism, and um, if you like, let the proper normative has become the trust of leadership. It bothers you and I. I listened to your other two colleagues when they did their brief analysis of what we're confronted with and what we face. Uh, let me say clearly that chapter two, precisely section 14 of the 1999 constitution provides for federal character. And the reason the constitution provided for federal character is simply because we live in a multi-ethnic, multilingual, multi-religious society. We live in a country that has tendencies that, if you like, are variegated. And I say this advisedly. We live in a country where you you have people who are Igbos, Yorubas, Aousas, the Fulanese, and the minorities. And in a nation like ours, what should be the minimum is a true sense of belonging, where the Igbo man feels truly and believes truly that he's Nigerian. The Yoruba man has a sense of belonging. The jo, the Jokun, the Tiv, the Igala, the Ibibio, the, the Idoma, the Fulani and the Aousa. When we live in some kind of uh, confluence, um, a rainbow coalition where every tendency has a true sense of belonging. Unfortunately, since 2015, Rather than urge and nudge our president to do what is proper, right and right, people ponder to political correctness. And that is why when we talk about the need for effective application of a normative of federal character, mm. don't even forget Ua, that we even have a federal character commission. And that's because uh, those who crafted our constitution and those who created that agency wanted a true sense of belonging for the disparate tendencies that live in Nigeria. Mm. Unfortunately, sadly so, since 2015, what we have are predominantly names of a particular sound and boil. Hmm. names of a particular tendency and ethnicity, names of a particular crime and religion. Hmm. And that is why Nigerians are beginning to really worry whether we have a Nigerian president or we have an ethnic president, whether we have a president who cares about the Federal Republic or we have a president who cares about, our, about his people. And who are, let me say clearly, because I know that a lot of people are listening to us. As I talk to you, in 2017, I left the party, the All Progressive Congress, and I am back to the party. But so many of us are returning to the party because we want to correct the anomalies from within. Mm. And I, I think that the time has come for us to call a spade by its name. There is no need uh, pandering to political correctness and, uh, if you like, uh, allowing partisanship to obfuscate our views. I think that the time has come for us to say to Mr. President, the time has come for you to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, hmm. not the president of a particular section, tendency, religion, cleared up man.
All right. Tim, you want to come in? Yes, please. So, in defense of the accident of Nigeria, Dr. Mona Dubwari, with respect to the appointment, some people have said that when you appointed certain people to office, it appears that it is really a vouch for perhaps that people are working or people who can trust. And so, for sensitive solutions, we rather put people who can trust. What do you say about this? What do you think about this line of thought? Can I get that clearly? I didn't get the last part of your question. Okay, so some people have said in defense of this action by, yeah, by the president, his excellency, but what action was taken because these are the people that his, the president can trust, that these are people he will vouch for. So you rather put such people in positions that are very sensitive, perhaps because they've got to them before, perhaps because he has you know, he known their testimonials or things like that. So what do you think of this line of argument? Because there's this line of argument that the president is appointing people in certain offices because he can trust these people not to be such sensitive issues. So what do you think of this line of argument? That line of argument derives competency and capacity. It mocks logic and clear thought. It's, it's, it's a bit um, uh, worrisome to have people make that argument. Uh, when you set out to become the president of a federal republic such as ours, the simple, the minimum, is that we expect that you're able to have consultants, you're able to have confidence who can traverse the country and get you the best minds from different uh, tendencies and regions. Uh, and that's exactly where I disagree with those who think that, oh yeah, he's the president and he has to get people you can trust. No. The very moment you set out to become a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the first thing, the minimum is that you should know quite a lot about the country you want to govern. And then the second part is that you should have people you can trust across the, we have six geopolitical zones, across the zones who can recommend competent hands who can recommend patriots and statesmen to you, and then you can vet and, and, and see those you can deploy, and if you like, appoint to different positions. But unfortunately, we have um, a, a leadership. We have a government that has refused to do uh, justice to these issues. I, I'll give you another practical instance. The reason the Constitution made provision for federal character nominees is because the Constitution understands that, uh, and the draftsmen understand that across the tendencies that uh, make up our country, there is no region, there is no space that does not have competent minds and competent hands. You cannot go to the Southwest and tell me that you can't find a man who can handle the Nigerian police effectively. You cannot go to the South South and tell me that you do not have an effective hand that can handle the MPA successfully. You cannot go to the Southeast and tell me that you do not have somebody who can effectively manage the Ministry of Finance effectively. And so you can also uh, come to the North Central to tell me you don't have people who can manage these portfolios. The, the failure of leadership is the lack of capacity and competency to look at these fundamentals. And that is why when some of us initially left the party and said, oh, we cannot, this, this wasn't what we campaigned for in, in 2015. We campaigned for a president who will make the Nigerian estate his territory, a president who will make the Nigerian estate his con constituency. And uh, when those appointments began to to, to inundate our, our, our prayers. Uh, and you look at it and you have a slant that is not what. So many of us got a bit offended. And some of us left the party. But now it's imperative that uh, when you look at the political demograph, we must begin to effectively critique leadership from within if you want to change our country for good. Huh. So uh, I disagree with those who are saying that uh, our president is appointing those he can trust. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria must rise above clannish interests. He must rise above ethnicity. He must rise above cronyism. He must rise above nepotism. 
And I do sincerely think that the time has come for those who truly love him, those who truly care about him, and those who truly care about our country to tell him, no matter how much those who pat his back are telling him, oh, it's okay, so long as Nigeria works. Uh, people must begin to speak truth to power and tell him it's not okay. It's only okay when every tendency in Nigeria, every region, every creed and clan has a true sense of belonging. Okay. All right, um, Jennifer, I'm going to come oh. to you, but you know what? We'll just take a very, very short break. When we return, I'll come to Jennifer, then we'll take some questions from our audience. Stay with us. We'll be right back.